racism, ignorance, hate. It has no place in our game. I feel like I don't belong here. Probably the first way we like came together was that initial like text thread. Yeah. That that group. And then just hearing each other's stories and them being so similar to each other's and just like relating to each other like that. First time, you know, you actually get called, you know, a racial epithet. It's it's kind of like you, you you get it and like you just get angry. You don't get time to process it. It's obviously something that your parents have faced in life. You know, they've gone through that and you know they kind of try to break it down for you. And especially when we're in our position playing, you know, a predominantly white sport. You know, it sucks, but we, we kind of got to let things like that go for us to, you know, take it to another level. As a kid, like, when that stuff happens, you don't really, like, want to talk about it, you know? It's kind of the first time now, like, at 26 years old, I'm finally coming out and, you know, speaking my mind, you know? Like, I remember when I was a kid, like, all the encounters I had, like, you just want to curl up and, you know, just, just you know, exactly. just be by yourself. All your teammates are all white, your coaches are all white, so they don't really understand. It is like you're standing up for your 12-year-old self when you didn't have the words or didn't have the knowledge about uh, the situation that you were in. You guys got kids, as you, you got pr proud fathers. Why would you want your kid to ever experience something like that? Would you put them in hockey? Uh, you don't. That, I, that's, that's a tough yeah. question to I, ask. And I think that's why, if you actually look at it, especially in Canada, how the rate of people playing hockey is going down because people don't even want to face those situations anymore, right? Would I put you know, my daughter in hockey if I knew she was going to have to face the same stuff I face? Probably not, right? But at the same time, you know, I want her to be able to do what she loves without ever having, you know, the things that happened to us happen to her. For me, I think it's just educating yourself on kind of the history of the BIPOC community first and foremost, and I think there's there's a lot of empathy there to be able to understand that just because of the color of our skin, we don't get the same opportunities as, as, as other players, and we have to work twice, three times as hard to get the same type of opportunity. I think it's one of those things where we're not asking to be put above everybody else. We're just asking for an equal playing ground and just to be judged upon what we do on the ice, not what our appearance is and the kind of music we listen to and all the other things that have nothing to do with the game of hockey. It's completely different uh, when you're a white player in this league or growing up and people still don't understand that. We say that the game's kind of given us everything and we owe everything to the game, but you know that being said, that is true, and it's an absolute privilege to play in the NHL. You know we've worked for it, we've earned it, we've done everything in our power to give ourselves, you know, that opportunity, even you know with all the hurdles and the obstacles, right? That that came with it. Like think about everything that we had to tiptoe around and, and finesse, and we still we still got to this this level. It hasn't been easy. We've committed our whole lives to it. You know it's something that we deserve. We can't do this by ourselves. We need our allies. We need other people, um, you know, especially our fans, to, to help us and speak up for us and, you know, have our backs at the same time. Obviously, we can have our own backs, which we're obviously going to do, but we're only so many, you know, within this game. <laughs>